Hello and welcome back to my Sandbox CDB series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. After the failure of the Taurus B reusable launcher in its first launch in the new atmosphere of Kerbin, the EDB has been hard at work to update the venerable launcher, originally designed in version 0.25 without altering any of its distinguishing qualities. The result is this, the Taurus C launcher, which will have its first launch and hopefully recovery today. The payload for this launch is an ore drilling unit and an ISRU converter orbital station destined for Minmus. We'll discuss them more further into the launch and during later coverage of their approach to Minmus. For now, we'll pick up the count here, T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. We have liftoff of the Taurus C on its first launch carrying a ore drilling unit and ISRU converter to Minmus. Now of course the Taurus C will simply get the payload to orbit and then the payload will have to boost itself to the far-flung moon. This new Minmus station will eventually get a name but only after it reaches safe orbit around Minmus. Here we see the unique profile, the rectangular profile, if you will, of the Taurus C, uh, similar to the other Taurus launchers. One of the key features that were not changed in updating the launcher. So two sides wider than the other two sides. And of course to accommodate more fuel in the same amount of space. And also unchanged is the engines. The core engine is a KR2L. and beside it are four mainsails. The changes to the launcher really begin with the mainsail pods and the first thing was the addition of SAS units to those pods instead of within the uh, in line with the rest of the stack. Because the SAS units are not structurally very strong it was better to put them on those pods instead of in line with the payload and so that was the first change and once that change was made the EDB decided to no longer go with the orange tanks on the mainsail pods and instead uh, go with the grayish tanks uh, because of the length of those pods being just a little bit longer with the SAS units there. Structurally the placement of the the mainsail pods also is improved with the use of new parts as we see the mainsails go off and now the KR2L is burning all on its own. Uh, a little bit of uh, orientation problem with the rocket here. It would be possible to use various means to straighten that out but it looks like it is running alright there is fairing separation so there are four SAS units compared to just two for the old Taurus B and they are mounted lower in a safer position other changes to the launcher include the addition of eight drogue chutes which will deploy prior to the deployment of the two sets of main chutes and then nose cones on top of the landing strut segments and that is to reduce drag going up and then heat shields on the bottom of the landing pod segments in order to increase drag going down in order to slow down the launcher faster which is essential and also to reduce overheating potential and so hopefully we, we won't see the landing struts burn up or anything like that uh, Ablative shielding will eventually be dropped off once the EDB sees how much is used, so the ablator will be reduced in order to reduce the mass of the heat shielding on the bottom of the vehicle. Other than that, the decision was made not to make any other drastic changes to the vehicle, and so far it looks like that is working out fairly well for the EDB as the KR2L continues to boost the rocket to orbit. Still a long way to go here as... Uh, is a slow burning process though efficient certainly efficient here but it's gonna take a little bit of time to get this all to orbit target orbit will be 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers talking a little bit more about the payload here the the drilling unit has a narrowband scanner and this is the first time the EDB is trying out the narrowband scanner it might be necessary to send another supplementary scanner satellite for this mission, but uh, for now the EDB will test out the narrowband scanner to see how that works out. The The drilling unit is configured strictly for Minmus, which means that it is a little bit underpowered for any other body, and it has two drilling units, very heavy, and of course a large ore tank, 
It cannot convert the fuel on its own. It will have to rendezvous with the ISRU converter in Minmus orbit. As we see here, the launcher getting close to orbit around Kerbin. And its orbit is a little bit low on the periapsis side. Will be a little bit into the atmosphere, but the apoapsis side is reaching about 100 kilometers and we'll have engine out here. Okay, a little bit of a margin just to make up for the fact that it might catch a little drag in the atmosphere still. So now the Taurus C launcher is coasting up. And you'll see the ISR unit has four large solar panels. The payload, uh, the the ore drilling unit has two solar panels as we see the entire vehicle turning now to make its circularization burn at apoapsis. The, the ore drilling unit also has two fuel cells mainly to counterbalance the, the mass of the narrowband scanner on one side of it but also to potentially provide extra power while drilling. Once the ore drilling unit is separated from the orbital station it will actually dock on the side of the station rather than at either end and that's because both ends of the station have large docking ports for future modules. Okay, here we go with the circularization burn, bringing the orbit to roughly 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers. And there we go, engine shut down on the KR2L. The lights you see here are on the on the ore drilling unit, and those are its downward facing lights for landing. And here we have separation of the payload. And on the orbital station portion there are four Rockamax 487S's and those are what will provide it the thrust necessary to get over to Minmus. Here we have the four solar panels extending so successful deployment of the solar panels essential of course for the conversion process which takes a lot of electric power and now it is time to as we see this drift off it is time to turn to the Taurus C launcher and examine whether it can make its return safely. Of course, critical. Uh, the entire purpose of this launcher is to be reusable. If it is not reusable, of course, it is far too expensive for the payload it can deliver to Kerbin orbit, and certainly no improvement over the ELS launcher, which is adapted from the ETS shuttle. And here it is orienting retrograde as the payload continues to drift off and it will make its way to the burn point and burn to a periapsis of roughly 27 kilometers. There we see 26.8 kilometers on the periapsis right over the eastern peninsula there. On entering the atmosphere the Taurus Sea was framed by the rising sun and oriented so that it's uh, its wider side would be would be horizontal with respect to the ground and so you see here it rolling a little bit of roll issues with this launcher on the way up mission control reports that it was a little bit difficult to maintain its attitude and keep it from rolling and certainly it has ended up in a slight inclination with respect to the KSC that was not intended and so is deviating to one side during launch. Here we see air breaks out and it's slowing down and relatively high in the atmosphere we expect it will catch quite a bit of drag and here you see descending below 40, 47 kilometers soon and it already has flame effects going. We see a blade her burning off but not very fast and the entire vehicle covered in flames at this point, descending below 43 kilometers. From this angle it doesn't seem so severe, but that is purely the matter of the angle and not due to the actual reality. It is getting quite hot for the Taurus C as it goes firmly suborbital, bringing its orbit in. As it crossed the western coast of the continent, the air brakes were in to prevent any overheating of them. No overheating signs otherwise and the ablator was fairly tame in its ablation. It was fairly clear by this point that the vehicle would overshoot which is 
far preferable to it undershooting and hitting the mountains. Uh, rough ground is not good for this launcher, however it is considered water safe. And so a splashdown landing is possible. And we'll see how that works out for the EDB here. Indeed, as you look at the trajectory, it will definitely overshoot. Still, it'll be much closer than uh, much closer to the KSC than that map would indicate. As drag continues to do its work, it passing over the the western mountain range here. Still, no indications of overheating at this point. Good drag on the vehicle. Despite that drag, of course, overshooting the KSC, as you see here, also a little bit north. Uh, due to the bad inclination thanks to deviations during launch and here we see it passing beyond the KSC estimated touchdown point is 20 kilometers to the east and we'll see whether the promise of good splashdown landings will come to fruition here uh, a little bit of staging rearrangement as the EDB gets ready for drogue chute deployment. And there we have the drogue chutes out. The drogue chutes have been successfully deployed, eight of them all together. Slowing the vehicle down further, air brakes are fully out here. And now first main chute deployment. Looks alright. And all the main chutes are out. Not fully deployed yet, of course, that'll occur at roughly 500 meters. SAS and RCS currently off. RCS reactivated and SAS will be reactivated once the chutes fully deploy here. Uh, we have uh, full chute deployment, bringing the vehicle to about 11 meters per second. SAS is on and thrust applied to slow the vehicle down for touchdown with gear down as well. We have touchdown, soft touchdown, but the vehicle is leaning a bit. Vehicle is leaning a bit, but uh, the RCS allows the Verners to hold it, and it looks like the Verners are doing their job to hold the vehicle. By the way, uh, two Verners on each side now for the Taurus C. That might have been a change that was not noted before. But yes, it looks like it's recoverable, and uh, the EDB will proceed with that immediately. Successful launch of the Taurus C and recovery. And now with the payload, we have the plot to Minmus here. And the payload will make its way in two burns because with four Rocket Max 48 7Ss, it doesn't have very much thrust and it will need the time to uh, make the 900 meter per second burn or so. Incidentally, while the shuttle couldn't have handled this entire payload at once, it is possible that it could have deployed each portion separately, the ore drilling unit and, uh, and the station portion. As we see here, the engine is lit for transfer over to Minmus. So it would have taken two shuttle launches in order to manage this launch, which would have been an additional expense. The external tank, of course, not being recoverable. And there we have the payload framed against the sunset on its first burn. And then a replot of the trajectory to Minmus for the second burn to make sure that encounters Mimis properly, uh, taking advantage of uh, burning out of one of the nodes in order to eliminate the need for an inclination change. Here the payload is orbiting Kerbin once and it will return to its periapsis where it will continue its burn. And so we see that here burning in nighttime with the promise of sun on the horizon. Another long burn for this payload. With plenty of fuel left though. And here we have the conclusion of the burn as its orbit begins to touch the orbit of Minmus. And quickly we get an encounter. Okay, our final adjustments bring the encounter in as close as possible. It ends up being a little bit more distant than originally planned, uh, 760 odd kilometers rather than 570. But the payload is on its way, we will have a new Minmus station and an ore drilling unit, and this will be much more efficient than attempting to drill for ore around the moon, though those operations will continue as well. We can expect that further additions to this station, should it make its way successfully to Minmus orbit, 
uh, would be facilities for the Orion Space Liner to dock and of course accommodations for its passengers. Uh, but for now we'll say thank you for watching this presentation of the first Taurus C launch from the EDB. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.